find out exactly why guys on death row somehow always get married. Where is an unexpected place to find love? Yeah, that's right, prison. If we were on death row, one of the last things on our mind would be love. But inmates getting married actually happens way more often than you expect. There's actually a word and a condition for having an attraction to someone that's committed a crime. It's called hybristophilia. The term is derived from the ancient Greek words hubrizin and philo. Hubrizian means to commit an outrage against someone, and philo means having a strong affinity or preference for. It's also known as Bonnie and Clyde syndrome. This is the most likely reason why someone like Ted Bundy ended up getting married and becoming a father after getting into prison. Or why both of the Menendez brothers are currently married despite being in prison for almost 30 years. But why? What are the real reasons? Psychology bloggers have presented different theories for why someone would be attracted to someone in prison. This included the desire to change that person, or the tendency to only see the good in that person, such as seeing someone that's been hurt instead of the actual flawed criminal. Sometimes some women just do it to try to get in on the media spotlight. Author Sheila Eisenberg interviewed female hybristophiliacs for one of her books. What she found out was quite interesting. A lot of the women were doing it for the fantasy element of it all. That, and along with having control. Obviously, if her man is behind bars and she's out in society, she has control in the relationship. She can decide when to visit. She can choose when to take phone calls. Or decide whether or not she'll even accept the calls. She's that man's primary link with the outside world. So as you can clearly see, it's a powerful position to be in. Then there's the taboo danger part to the romance. Obviously, there's still a danger to it when the person they're with could just snap at any moment. And there's the hyper-masculine aggressive part that's appealing to some women. That's according to Dr. Michael Aaron, a NYC-based therapist. So do men get these same feelings too? While the vast majority is women, some guys can have the same feelings for women in prison as well. According to Aaron, these guys may also be attracted to the thrill and emotional intensity women on death row stir up. But it's nowhere as many as their women counterparts, just for the simple fact that there are way fewer women locked up. Basically, it sounds like these women are attracted to guys who are a bit primal. They're into going against social standards. There's just something for them going against the normal, polite, and groomed ways society expects. Women that have been interviewed admitted that they never actually want to be in real danger. They're essentially just wanting to play out a fantasy that's in their head. The total lack of empathy for human life is one of the major draws, but it isn't what the women actually believe in. Catherine Ramsland, professor of forensic psychology at DeSales University, has also heard one special theory. One woman told her of the notion of the perfect boyfriend. How? Well, she knows where he is at all times. She knows that he's thinking about her because what much else is going on in prison? Also, she knows that someone loves her, but she doesn't have to endure the day-to-day -day issues involved in most relationships. There's no laundry to do, no cooking for him, and no accountability to him. Apparently, she can keep the fantasy charged up for a long time. Psychologist Leon F. Seltzer thinks that most of it is based on an evolutionary psychology. This is the textbook case of alpha males that tend to attract women. This is because alpha males were good at protecting women and their offspring according to evolutionary history. He says the women may consciously realize that it's actually dumb to date someone that's a serious criminal, but they're attracted to them anyways. Basically, the hind brain takes over. This is essentially the extreme version of why women don't quote-unquote want to date nice guys. Women becoming infatuated with guys on death row happens over and over. There are plenty of examples. Carol Ann Boone, for example, married Ted Bundy and has his child. Richard Ramirez married magazine editor Doreen Leoy while in prison. And probably the most famous example is Charles Manson. 
He was granted a marriage license in 2014 to marry Afton Elaine Burton. She had been visiting him for the previous nine years. The two never ended up swapping vows before Manson passed in November of 2017 at the age of 83. However, later reports allege that his 26-year-old bride-to-be only wanted him to make money. Apparently, she wanted to keep him in a crypt and charge people money to come and look at his body. Yeah, that's not weird. But we bet she was still attracted to him. But if you really think about it, this is one reason why TV series discussing serial killers are big hits. Society doesn't really want to admit that the serial killer is a figure that fascinates the public. Just think of the true crime wave that's taken over pop culture. The hit podcast Serial introduced the world to Adnan Sayad and his quote, Dairy Cow Brown Eyes in 2014. Then there was Netflix's Making a Murderer that debuted in 2015. Whether they like to admit it or not, people are interested in all the details about things that they would never do themselves. It's the whole trying to understand someone whose psychological level that's just not normal. Plus, the media circus of major cases are the driving force behind these women reaching out to connect with the prisoners in the first place. If there wasn't coverage, most people would never know about these guys. And ironically, Netflix gave viewers a front row seat to one of these relationships in Making a Murderer Part 2. The docu-series became a one-person Tinder app for Stephen Avery. Part 1 introduced us to a few of Avery's girlfriends, including his former fiance Sandra Greenman. In between the two seasons, his love life played out in the tabloids. After splitting from Sandra, Avery began dating Lynn Hartman. She began writing to Avery in prison to, quote, offer some kind of support, as she explained during her brief appearance in part two. Avery acknowledged all the attention he was receiving from female fans. The couple got engaged before they actually met for the first time. Hartman even appeared on Dr. Phil to discuss their relationship. However, a few days after they filmed the episode, the couple's engagement abruptly ended. Hartman sent the breakup note she wrote Avery to the media, along with posing in the dress she bought for their wedding in a televised interview. Yeah, it definitely seemed like she was in it for the spotlight. Another example is Nico Jenkins. Nico is on death row for disposing of four people during an eight-day crime spree in Nebraska back in August 2013. Don Arguello fell for Nico Jenkins while volunteering for an inmate advocacy group. According to her, he's actually very sensitive and very intelligent. Yeah, sounds about right. Jenkins has been described by a psychiatrist as a psychopath. He went on his shooting spree less than two weeks after he was released from prison for stealing cars. Really, it's unclear as to what they have bonded over. However, she does appear to have a strong interest in prison life. In addition to belonging to a prison advocacy group, Arguello's Facebook profile lists her favorite film as Letters from Death Row. She lists her favorite book is Real Life Monsters, a psychological examination of the serial murderer. However, one of Arguello's friends insists that she's not a death row groupie. Well, that's definitely one way to be self-aware. But it's not always the groupies that marry the guys on death row. Lawyers get in on the action too? Oscar Ray Bolin was on death row when he married Rosalie Martinez, a member of his legal defense team. Martinez left her husband and gave up primary custody of their four children for Bolin, and the two remained married until January 2016 when it was his turn for the, ahem, injection. She confessed that she, quote, never, never, ever thought for a second that he was guilty. She said that during a 2020 special on their relationship. Then there's Jeremy Meeks. Although he wasn't on death row, his story still is essentially the same here. You likely wouldn't ever know anything about this guy who police had called, quote, one of the most violent criminals in the Stockton area, if he wasn't good looking. But his mugshot went viral after the Stockton Police Department posted it on their Facebook, and he was on a lot of people's radar. After he served a couple of years in prison, he became a prominent model and ended up working for several well-known brands, such as Philip Klein and Tommy Hilfiger. The best part? He went on to date a billionaire's daughter, Chloe Green, and she had a kid with him. All this from one mugshot going viral. Crime definitely pays for some people. 
Watch this next video to learn all about how this guy scammed almost $40 million.